Recently, I did a video about GitHub requiring 2FA as of October, and I thought 2FA was a pretty cut and dry case. If it's available, use it. It's a basic security improvement. But to my surprise, a significant number of people were completely against it. Some of them had fairly good reasons, others not so much. So let's go through some of those comments, starting with my account isn't very valuable. 2FA is always a good idea. This is simply not true. If you don't have anything super critical on your account, enforcing use of inconvenient extra layer of security is useless. Now, I can understand that, but sometimes the idea of an account takeover isn't for what is on the account itself, but it's for an account that isn't linked to the person doing the attack. Your account can then be used in further attacks to say post malware, spam repos, or just be a general nuisance on the platform. And especially if you have your name attached to that account, all of that falls back on you. I totally get that it's inconvenient and you don't want to do it, but the security of the software ecosystem is incredibly important. Next up, phone numbers. Microsoft comes in buying GitHub and now they want my phone number. No thank you, I'll let my account expire. And a bunch of other people had very similar concerns. Well, we all know they're doing this to mine personal data. I reply by saying, what data can they mine? Your phone number is one of them for the ones that are doing that route. I see no security in 2FA and I have a sense of feeling that GitHub just wants to collect more phone numbers. I don't like Microsoft as much as the next person, and I totally understand not wanting to give them your phone number. So don't give them your phone number. SMS 2FA is only one of the options available on GitHub. You do not have to use it, and most security experts will recommend against it. Now, a lot of platforms out there only offer SMS 2FA. Those platforms should probably update and add something actually secure. In the case of GitHub though, it also offers WebAuth through the use of their mobile app. It offers Topped, commonly used in the form of an authenticator app like Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, Authy, things like that. And also security keys, most commonly used in the form of a YubiKey, but nowadays there are plenty of alternatives. If you give Microsoft your phone number to do SMS to a fay, you don't get to complain they're trying to harvest your phone number. You willingly gave it to them. For anyone unsure why SMS 2FA is probably not the best of ideas, there is a couple of issues. One, malware on your phone that reads your SMS and just sends that data to some server somewhere. Two, a far less likely issue, which is a SIM swap attack where someone gets access to your phone, they swap out the SIM cards, and then they just have access to your SIM card. And then the third one is SMS sniffing, where someone will actually sniff the SMS traffic and basically just see every message that comes through. This is a well understood problem and the tools to do so are fairly inexpensive. Now, are you going to be the target of one of these attacks? Probably not. However, there are better solutions than SMS 2FA. But what if you don't have a smartphone? It's a hard requirement for me to have an SMS option. Since I don't have a smartphone, I use a feature phone only. This isn't someone using like a 15 or 20 year old phone. These are still being made today. There is this assumption, and I had it as well, so I do understand it, that you need a smartphone or a security key to do to a fay. This is simply not true. Thanks to what is called topped or time-based one-time password. All of the major password managers, whether it's LastPass, Bitwarden, KeyPassXC, all support storing top secrets. So you can do what would be done in an authenticator app on your computer. The marking around top is absolutely terrible. There are so many people, as I said, myself included, who assumed the only way to do it was from one of these authenticator apps. You don't need to do that. Now, in before the security experts in my comment section, because I know exactly what you're going to say, 2FA shouldn't be done on the same device. It is way less secure. And yes, you are absolutely correct. If you want to be doing 2FA in the optimal way, it should be on two completely distinct devices and your authentication device should not be on the internet. But if your goal is just to have 2FA working on a single device, it can absolutely be done with a password manager on your computer. 
obviously ensure you have a really strong password on your password manager and for a regular person this is going to be fine. Security is very much a sliding scale. For a normal person that doesn't have a super high value account, this is good enough. Now, if you're Linus Torvalds, Daniel Stenberg, Jeremy Soller, you know, people that actually have a notable account and notable things connected to them, maybe for them, doing that isn't good enough. For those people, maybe a phone isn't even good enough. Maybe they prefer a hardware top device. But no matter which solution you go with, there is going to be a shared problem. I wonder how much trouble this turns into when I want to change cell phone companies, change phone numbers, lose or break my phone, lose or break my USB thingy. I have never lost a phone, I don't understand how you lose your phone, but sometimes accidents happen. Sometimes you drop your phone into a pool, sometimes you drop your phone, it gets run over by a car. I understand, this is a totally valid concern. Security is always going to be a trade-off with convenience. GitHub has some migration and recovery systems in place, so if that ever does occur, you can make a new account that is still linked to your old commits and it isn't a major issue. But no one really wants to have to do that, they just want to be able to get into their account. But there are some things you can do to mitigate this being a problem. Say your phone is your main 2FA device, you're using an authenticator app. You can also enroll in multiple other forms of 2FA. So you can also have topped in your password manager, or you can have a security key, or you can use any of these other methods. If you happen to lose one of these devices, you can then log into your account with another solution and then get rid of that old device out of the list of authorized devices. It then no longer works and cannot access your account. My suggestion, if you're really concerned, always have a backup device that never leaves your house. It sits in your desk, it sits in a drawer somewhere, and only comes out when your main solution isn't working. But some people don't think 2FA has any value. All my passwords are on KeyPassXC, different passwords for every single service and login. Whenever possible, I use 30 plus character long passwords. Now I'm using 50 plus. I can't log in in any service without my device, KeyPassXC. What security advantages are 2FA offering me? None. It is simply BS because most people are irresponsible with their passwords. Now I will not disregard the fact that the most value for 2FA comes from those people that are, you know, using the exact same password for every single platform. Yeah, platforms can force a minimum character length and force you to use numbers and symbols. What happens is a lot of people take the path of least resistance, come up with a password that hits all of those factors, and use the same thing everywhere. However, that doesn't mean that someone with good password practices doesn't benefit from 2FA. What if the platform you're using has a database leak? And it turns out that platform is storing plain text passwords. It doesn't matter if your password is one character long or a hundred characters long, they now have your password. What if you fall for a phishing email and just give them your password? Once again, it doesn't matter how long it is. Think of 2FA like insurance for your account. Most of the time you are not going to need it and it's going to seem like a giant waste of time. But you're going to be hating yourself when you do need it and you don't have it. While I may not have agreed with all of them, those were at least the rational concerns. Now we get to the less rational section. You are correct for now. What do you mean for now? GitHub supported 2FA since 2015. GitHub can change the rules whenever they want. Tomorrow they can require something else like your phone number, which seems crazy to me for hosting a bit of open source code that I wrote. If you trust Microsoft on this, good for you. I don't think anybody should trust Microsoft, but I also don't think you should be afraid of something that hasn't happened yet. I don't like this mentality of you are safe for now. All it makes you do is live in fear of things that just haven't happened. You haven't crashed your car. For now. You haven't been robbed. For now. Your parents aren't dead. For now. Stop worrying about things that haven't happened yet and judge them for what is going on right now. Live in the moment and look at what is actually happening. If Microsoft at some point decides, hey, only SMS to a fee is allowed on GitHub, at that point we can say, sure, security is no longer a concern and all they want to do is get your phone number. But long before that point, 
I wouldn't be surprised if they bring in KYC. Microsoft owns GitHub. It is more about control than security. Seems like everyone in this comment section is fine with it. Microsoft controlling GitHub. I'm sure this is very healthy for free and open source software in general. I don't know what extra control this person thinks that Microsoft gets by enforcing 2FA. They are saying, use a basic security feature. If Microsoft comes to you and says, hey, you need to lock your doors at night so nobody breaks into your house. I don't think you should just leave your doors unlocked to spite Microsoft. And now for my absolute favorite comment. 2FA is nice, but is it just me who thinks Microsoft being Microsoft will abuse this for better AI training? As in, they train their models on code, issues, comments, etc. from only these accounts. Who is going to tell this person about GitHub Copilot? Every bit of data that is on GitHub is already being used as AI training data. There is literally a lawsuit ongoing about exactly this. And now for the final comment. I don't like being ordered what to do by people who are using my work for free. If they were suggesting it, sure. I might have done it knowing I had a say on it. You know what? Fair enough. I think you should enable 2FA to ensure your account is secure. But at least this person isn't trying to cope about it. They're not trying to say, 2FA is bad, it's not secure, I don't need to do it. No, they're just saying, I don't want to do it. I have literally nothing to say that will convince you, but you should enable it. I am sure there is going to be more 2FA comments on this video. So, hey, maybe there'll be another part. I don't know, but hopefully you learnt something about 2FA. And if you were one of the people who left a comment, hopefully I answered some of your concerns and maybe you changed your mind on it. I don't know, we'll see though. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Veripay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Go enable your 2FA.